Welcome to Throne of Chaos. We are your hosts, Autumn and Kelsey. And today we are discussing chapter 26 and 27 of Throne of Glass. As always, we do not represent Sarah J. Mass or Bloom Sari Publishing. Our thoughts and opinions are our own, and they have no idea we exist. So don't worry that we're speaking for them. <laughs> Episode recap from last week, we talked about chapters 24 and 25 where Selena found a passageway hidden behind the tapestry in her room. She found out a way, she found a way out of the castle through a sewer gate and also observes the feast being held. Almost every other champion is present, only her and Kane are as, absent. Only her and Kane are absent. She hurries back to her room when she sees Kale leaving. Dorian arrives at her room first and Kale kicks him out. He wakes her to give her a ring, and she quickly falls back to sleep. Selena believes she is dreaming as she walks down the passageway again, this time leading to a tomb. She discovers that it is the tomb of King Gavin Havillard. 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 She Imagine discovers there's it's... like a Y in there. Havillard. Havillard. Okay. She discovers it is a tomb of the King Gavin Havillard and his wife, Queen Elena Galathinius Havillard. That is a mouthful of a name. <laughs> it's I'm like just... Selena's full name. <laughs> yes. Aelin. It's Aelin's like a, name. oh gosh. Aelin Ash River Galathinius <laughs> Whitethorn. <laughs> but it's also, it kind of reminds me of like, um, Sweet Life. Esteban. Yeah. He's like, Esteban. Julio Rodriguez. <laughs> That's why Julio like, Rodriguez something, something. He was like, yeah. nobody insults such and such. And like when he, he gets to the end of the it. name, I think it was he Cole. Like, <gasps> he was takes like a big deep breath. Yes. Cole was like, nobody's at the time. Sorry for that rant, but yeah. Elena appears to her, not quite a ghost, but not living. She tells Selena that she must win the competition and become the king's champion. Aurelia needs her, someone who understands their plight. She gives her an amulet to wear as protection, and Selena rushes back to her rooms before something that is snarling and growling catches her. Selena awakes later and realizes that it was not a dream, and she is holding the amulet. Side note, last week we said amulet about 45 times, and then we got to the amulet of Orinth, and we were like... <laughs> What's that called? What's the name of it? The something of Orient. Something. It was Amulet. <laughs> I knew I'd read it. Like, I just read it. In the same sentence, we were like, the Eye of Elena, the Amulet, the Arkesian Amulet. Amulet, Amulet, Amulet. And they were like, it's something of Orient. We don't know. <laughs> It was the amulet of Lawrence. So for everybody that was screaming in your car at us, we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On to chapter 26. Selena is awoken by Kale bursting in her bedroom, dragging her out of bed and demanding to know where she was last night. She tells him that she was in her room all night. He should know since he visited her, since he visited her to give her the ring. She begins to worry if he found out about her going into the hidden passageway. He responds that it was only for a few minutes, and she asks what all the fuss is about, and Kale tells her the test has been canceled. A champion, Xavier, the thief from Melisande, was found dead this morning. She asks if he thinks she did it, and he replies that he hopes not, since Xavier had been found half-eaten. She wonders if Xavier's death had anything to do with the previous two deaths, and that this was developing a pattern. She says that perhaps Cain... She says that perhaps Cain did it. He's beastly enough to do such a thing. Kel tells her she's glad she finds some humor in a man's murder. She replies that Cain is the most likely candidate. As someone from Annie L, Kel should know the behavior of the men from the White Fang Mountain. He tells Selena that she should be careful who she accuses. Cain is Duke Barrington's champion. She responds that she is the Crown Prince's champion and should be able to accuse whomever she pleases. Kel again asks her where she was last night. She says, as her guards can attest, she was in her rooms, and if the king wants to question her, she can always tell the king that Kel can vouch for her, too. Again, can I please teleport into the book and slap Kel across his dumb face? Like, if you were so worried about her doing something terrible, mm -hmm. maybe 
me you shouldn't have been partying all night and left her alone in her rooms like plus she had guards outside outside her door like they would have obviously said something if she came back covered in blood Mm -hmm. which if the champion is half eaten then of course she'd have been covered in blood Mm -hmm. also i'm still trying to figure out why it took so long to figure out that like kane was the one doing the murders or summoning the beast the red rock doing the murders also selena's first instinct was correct to accuse him and they should have stuck by it but like Kel's an idiot I don't, get why, I don't get why he was so you can't accuse Kaney's duke parrington's champion and she's like okay i'm the princess champion and he trumps the duke last time i checked but yeah mm-hmm. he was right that she left her rooms <laughs> he was correct <laughs> but she but she didn't, didn't murder what he some thought people. she did yes i and just put water all down my sh- oh no down my lap <laughs> That's what I get for holding a cup in my lap. Okay, sorry for interrupting. No, that's okay. <laughs> in a previous chapter, we see that Kale chalks it up to as being a coincidence because there hadn't been a murder in a few weeks. Like, it's just a coincidence that these people died. But then why does he immediately go in and accuse her and then have the audacity be like, do not accuse Kane, the most plausible suspect? And she's like, yeah, I'm the crown princess champion. And I love that she calls him out for, I love that she calls him out for visiting her rooms. Mm-hmm. And she knows she's got him in that because he will not tell the king he was at her room at the wee hours of the morning because he don't want to explain that to him. So, and also that. Dorian was there too. She doesn't, right. she doesn't she's, call out Dorian, but right. like, right. Dorian, the prince was also outside of her room at like mm-hmm. two in the morning, like, and if the guards are questioned, they can for sure say who went in and out of that room. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't Selena no. that they saw. <laughs> she went out a different door <laughs> that they don't know exists. Right. Which is fine. But she wasn't out murdering people. Like, yeah. that's the part that gets me. Yeah. Also, for those keeping track, this is the fifth champion that's been murdered. And we are now down to 16. Kale glances at the ring he gave her last night and blushes. He tells her that she should be pleased to know that there will be no lessons today either. She tells him she is very pleased then to get out so she can celebrate by sleeping. She closed her eyes and waited for him to leave. Once he slammed the door, she sat up. She thinks about how her dream wasn't a dream, but was very real and wondered if those screeching creatures she heard had killed Xavier. She thinks there's no way they could have been in the castle halls without someone noticing. She needs more makeshift weapons and to fortify the locks of her windows and doors. She readied her defenses, though, reassuring herself that there was nothing to worry about. Locked locked her bedroom door and slipped into the tomb. She searched the tomb looking for anything that could explain Elena's motives or what the source of this mysterious evil might be. In the daytime, the light shone into the tomb and she wondered how light was making its way this far below the castle. Selena looked into the shaft where the light was coming from and discovered that it was lined with polished gold. So in Crown of Midnight, we find out that Brannon designed this tomb himself. And um, he hides the first word key there for whomever the nameless one is to find in the future. Mm -hmm. So honestly, this was genius of him to like make a shaft that pointed directly on her. Mm -hmm. And lined it with gold to make sure that the sunlight could make it all the way down under the castle to, Mm -hmm. like, give a clue of, like, this is where the word key is. Yeah. He's also the one who carved himself the Oz Times Rift into the foot of her tomb. Right. I was thinking about this the other day, and we know the king found the word key first. Mm -hmm. So... After, after he was taken over by the Valg, all of his intentions or anything that he wanted to do as a king of Otterland, that's all gone. It's now based on what Erewhon and the Valg want to do with Aurelia and all that. So you think yes. that's why they don't ever come. I think before he was possessed, they probably used to come to this tomb more often and like paid mm-hmm. respects to their dead and Elena and Gavin and all. 
But after that, he didn't care, so then no one else cared, and it just all became forgotten. Yeah. I think that but also sums it up. He, I want to know what their original intent was. Like, what was the idea when he got repossessed by, when p- parenting got possessed by Erewhon? Because, mm-hmm. like, he made it where magic was stopped, which was the opposite of what Erewhon wanted because he I has think, magic. I think uh, he still had a little bit of power to be able he, to do yes. that. Yes. But, like, his full power had been stopped. hmm So My thing is, how does he, like, did he know why magic stopped? Or did he, because we've talked about that in a previous episode. The king of Otterland did all that, built the towers and all to stop magic, to stop Erwan from his plans, or delay them. Mm-hmm. So, why hadn't Erwan figured it out up until this point? And why did he allow it to continue? There had to be, like, a bigger plan there or something. Yeah. My only thought for that is most likely, like, since he still had some magic, Mm -hmm. it didn't harm, like, it kind of worked in his favor a little bit. Yeah. But he also decreed all magic illegal, and then they killed and burned everyone who had anything to do with magic. Yeah. Is that to stop them from being able to kill Erewhon? Yeah. I think it's... It lined up where Erwan didn't have, like, an opponent on Aurelia anymore. Right. Because there's no magic there only. And there's no so, healers. hmm Yeah. Yeah, good point. Was just a little curious by that. Yep. Okay, moving on. Elena looks at the... Selena looks at Elena's sarcophagus. The blue gem pulsed in the faint sunlight. Where was the... Per- what was the purpose? I'm just gonna restart that. It's Hold okay. <laughs> Elena and Selena, that's a it's lot. It's too close. <laughs> Selena looks at Elena's sarcophagus. The blue gem pulsed in the faint sunlight. What was the purpose of telling me those things? She asked aloud. You have been dead for thousands of years. Why still bother with Aurelia? And why her? Why not get Dorian or Kill or Nahemia or someone else to do it? She says, one would think you would have better things to do with your time, with your afterlife. So is the gym still pulsing because it spent so long with the word key inside of it and left like some sort of imprint of its power inside the gym? Because it was there for thousands of years before mm-hmm. King, the king and Parrington found the word key. Mm-hmm. Also, Nehemia and Dorian are both tasked with helping stop this evil. Nehemia is working with Elena, and we later learn that Dorian is also one of the nameless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at this point, we already know Nehemia is working with Elena. Mm -hmm. Dorian, as much as Selena Aelin isn't ready yet for this task, Dorian for sure ain't ready yet. He'll get um, <laughs> there, but he not at this time. Selena's um, way more prepared for that. Yes. I'm reading Crown of Midnight and one, uh, every time it goes to a part where it's supposed to be like cute for Kale and Selena, I'm like, <laughs> I'm literally in my book writing, well, I want to throw up gag. and yuck and <laughs> gag me because it's not cute. Like <laughs> if I was a 17, 15, 16, 17 year old girl reading it, I would have been like, oh, this is adorable. <laughs> but like, at my current age, I'm like, nah. Yeah. Like you did the you did the bare minimum. There was one scene where it's like, he just she's complaining because she wants more food, and he's like, "You're always eating." And she's like, "Well, haven't I earned the right to eat? I was in prison for a year." And so he gets up and leaves, and she's like, "Where are you going?" He's like, "Going to get you cake." I'm like, bare minimum, <laughs> bare minimum to go. Like I'm supposed to swoon over cake. Yeah. Honestly. But- Honestly, I'm kind of glad that we have to ick with him because we were just straight up drop him like a hot potato <laughs> for Rowan because I don't want to be pining for someone over here like, okay, you're bad. I'm, I've managed Moving to on. not fall for any of these, any of the two first love entrants. Yeah. Like Tamlin, well, I knew there was a recent. And so I was like, yeah. "Where? who is this guy? Mm-hmm. Who's this guy? This isn't the guy. And then- I'd heard Rowan, but I didn't know. 
I had an Selena idea, but Aileen. I didn't know mm-hmm. Selena and Aileen were the same person. And I was like, the whole time with Kale, I was like, this ain't it. Yeah. Which we'll talk about it when we get there. But there is a line where Kale specifically says he would never choose the King and Dorian. Like he would never choose Selena over the King and Dorian. And I was like, that line right there told you they were never end game. Yep. Never. Yep. yep. Sorry, that's the end of my that's kind of midnight rant. <laughs> Selena needs to get back to her rooms before someone comes looking for her. She doubts anyone would believe her if she told them that she had been charged with a very important mission by the first queen of Otterlin. She would be lucky if she wasn't accused of treason and magic using, which would certainly guarantee her return to Endovier. After the final sweep of the tune, Selena went back to her room. If Lena was serious about her becoming the king's champion, then she couldn't spend all her time hunting down whatever this evil was. If this evil was as threatening as Elena made it seem, then how could she possibly defeat it? She will focus on becoming the king's champion, and once she won, then she would go about finding this evil. An hour later, flanked by guards, Selena made her way to the library. She smirked at the court ladies who eyed, who eyed her, pink and gr- her pink and white gown. She couldn't blame them. It was a spectacular dress, and she looked spectacular in it. Even Ress, one of the handsome guards posted outside her door, had told her. She nodded at a nobleman who raised his brows at her. She noticed that he looked immensely pale, but as he opened his mouth to say something, she hurried down the hall. She heard the voices of arguing males, and she quickened down the hallway, ignoring the click of Ress's tongue as she rounded the corner. She smelt the tang of blood and the stinging reek of decomposing flesh. A A smell she was all too familiar with, but as she expected... But she hadn't expected the sight of it. Half eaten was a pleasant way of describing what was left of Xavier's body. Rest stepped closer to her, and she put a hand. And he put a hand on her back, encouraging her to keep walking. None of the men looked at her as she walked past, giving her a better look of the body. Xavier's chest cavity had been split open and his vital organs removed. Unless someone had moved them upon finding the body, there was no trace of them. His long face, stripped of flesh, was still contorted in a silent scream. This was no accidental killing. There was a hole in the crown of Xavier's head, and she could see that his brain was gone, too. The smears of blood on the wall looked like someone had been writing and then rubbed it away. Selena tried not to gape as she realized it was three word marks forming an arcing line that had to have once been a circle around the body. This reminds me of the Chrysalis demon, like, so much. The way the bodies Mm -hmm. look. Of course, there's no word marks tied to those. And obviously, to summon one of them, you have to have the synth that they were taking. And the salt, the obsidian salt. Yeah, the obsidian salt is what's summoning them. Summoning them in, which I just have a... My theory is that the obsidian salt and the word stone rings and collars are all the same substance. Yeah. That makes Just sense. like in different forms. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, I want to know what I feel like we get told, but I can't remember because my brain's just today. Uh, I want to know what the word marks were. Like, what do they say? Okay. I want the world a throne of glass. I want the world to throw in a glass. I need it. Okay, but something super cool is Mads on. Yes. She gave us a little sneak peek, little hint on Instagram on her stories. But she's drawing the word marks because she's drawing. She's literally drawing Rowan's tattoo. Rowan and Aylan's tattoo on their bodies. Using the real language of the word marks. <laughs> like. She's she's amazing. Yeah. She's too good. She's too good. Everything she does, I'm just in awe. Because I can't draw a stick figure good. For real. I don't don't ask me to draw anything. Yes. She's amazing. But I'm like, can she draw the word mark dictionary for us? Because that would be amazing. Which I think part of it is she's using the word marks that are described in the books. And then Mm -hmm. for words that she doesn't know, she's looking up ancient runes. Yeah. And pulling them in to be. Yeah. To tie in to help finish it. But yes, she amazes me. Like Mm -hmm. how... Mm-hmm. Are you that like? Because I'll read the word marks, the description of the word marks, and my brain will be like, come up with nothing. It's just blank no. space. 
No. It's just emptiness up here. And I'm like, I don't know what they look like. Just mm-hmm. keep going. Just yeah. I've even tried to draw them a couple of times following the like the description. And I'm like, that ain't it. I don't know what that <laughs> is, but that, that's not actually that's, it. That's not because Sarah obviously has it in her head of what she thinks it looks like. So she could tell us. Yes. And she does. She gives us a good amount of detail, but my she brain really, just can't comprehend it. My brain is not artistic. So like yes. I'm reading it and it's like reading math and mm-hmm. I'm terrible at math. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, no, <laughs> I got that. Back to the description of the body. Okay. Drunken brawl my butt. <laughs> okay. Well, that was a little PG-13. <laughs> that was Dorian before he saw it. But yeah, what the heck? And then Kale, oh, it's just a coincidence. Um, Their organs are missing. missing. He has a hole in his head where his brain was sucked out. It's, what? Selena was like, and Selena, and Selena's the only one acknowledging the fact that there's word marks around the body. Like yeah. she's like, oh, those are word marks. Yeah. And Kel knows that they are because he was there for that whole conversation where she was like, oh, what's those weird things that are written on the he ground? And like, every- oh, they're word marks. Don't worry about them. Oh, they're around the clock tower. Oh, they're at the crime scene. Like he's the worst detective ever. <laughs> Captain Useless. <laughs> Captain Kale Salad on the way to say nothing. <laughs> okay that's not totally fair to him he like literally tries to die for dorian multiple times so True. I'll, he was I'll a good him, friend him and dorian i will give them that they have a bromance like any like no other yeah. because like dorian came out of his like hayes position thing mm-hmm. when his dad commented on the fact that like he attacked kale yeah and that kale was probably dead yeah they were better and, couple than him and Selena. For real. I was like, <laughs> you two are obviously yeah. in love with each other. This <laughs> is why I couldn't handle Kale as the love interest. Because I was like, you love your bestie right. more than her. Like, there's no way this is going to work yeah. out. Yeah. Like, yeah. We saw all that from the beginning. Sarah, yeah. we knew what you were trying to do. For <laughs> she real. <tried. laughs> she did a better good job with tricking us with Tamlin. Like, yeah. the red flags were there, but they weren't as obvious. Yeah. Honestly, if I was younger reading this, there wouldn't be as probably a bigger... Oh, yeah, no. As I big of red flags, I would have felt a little bit. I would have I would have fell for it. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, my more little naive self. But Selena, girl, you've been through it. You're, you're mentally and physically older than 17, 18 right now because of all you've been through. But I get it. He's a cute boy. And... Yeah, you we'll, pick we'll better. Give you the benefit of the doubt there, and you end up picking better, so it works out. Though we're gonna get to air a fire, and we're like, "Here's better," punch and then the, the first face. thing he does is punch her in the face. Yeah, well, don't worry. We'll <laughs> give Rowan all the great. I, I will. Given. I will definitely red flag all the things he does in air fire because we're does. not green lighting him on the things that he did. No. Okay. Air Fire Rowan is a struggle. Yeah. It's Queen of Shadows Rowan. Yeah. And Empire, Empire of Storms Rowan. The beach scene. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The last scene. scene. <laughs> and then Kingdom of Ash Rowan. Yeah. Went off. Okay. Enough about Rowan. Back yep, to Kellen Selena. I'm just dreaming of the day I get we get back to him. Because I'm stuck in Crown of Midnight right now. And it's zero fun. Zero fun, sir. Slana, th- <laughs> Slana thinks no wonder Kale was so disheveled this morning, but he really thought she did this. If she wanted to knock out her competitors, she would do it quick and clean, a slit to the throat, a knife to the heart, or a poisoned glass of wine. The word, mar- the word mark seemed to make the killing something more brutal, something ritualistic. Slana passes Grave in the hallway and thinks about how there are only 16 champions left and only four will make it to the final duel. Selena really figured out the the murders without realizing she figured out the murders. And I'm like, you had it the whole time. You yeah. were there. You just mm-hmm. didn't believe in yourself. Yeah. Seriously, though, what? I'm going to assume that Kale goes busting into her room because he was scared something had happened to her. 
during the night after he saw her because he saw the body. He was like all freaked out and he's, I got to check on Selena. And he goes in the room and rushes, her, rushes to see what's going on, see if she's okay. And when and he then finds he her okay, she... he didn't know how to process those emotions in him that he was worried about her. So, so then he's he like, just... let me blame her for the murder. Where were you last night? You know what? That's that's a thousand percent on brand. That's what happened. That's he exactly... didn't think she actually pulled this guy's brain out of his head and do what with it. I don't know. He just was he... worried about her and didn't know how to process process that like a grown man. He was so mad at himself for being worried at her that he was like, blame Let her. me blame her. <laughs> yes. That's 100% what That's 1,000% what he did. It doesn't make it any better, but that's 1,000% no. what he did. That's definitely what happened. So now we switch over to Dorian's point of view. Dorian is sparring with Kale. They used to be of equal skill, but while Dorian enjoyed swordplay, he had grown to prefer books. Kale notices Dorian struggling and comments that this is what happens when you are idle. Dorian says he had meetings and important things to read. Kale says meetings, which you've used as an excuse to argue with Duke Parrington, or maybe you've been too busy visiting Miss Sardothian's rooms in the middle of the night. How long has that been going on? The green-eyed monster, sorry. <laughs> the green-eyed monster really loves to attack Kale. Like, yeah. He just, but he knows it's not jealousy. He knows it's not, I'm not jealous. You were the most jealous character I've ever met in a book series ever. And that's like, including Ron Weasley. (laughs) Like, (laughs) seriously. (sighs) Like, Dorian tells him that it wasn't like that. Besides, besides the night before, he had only visited her once and Slana was less than warm to him. Kale says that at least one of them has some common sense because Dorian has clearly lost his mind. Dorian asks if he wants to comment on why he was at her rooms last night, the same night when another champion had died. Kale responds that it's like Dorian said, it's not what you think. He asks how court has been, and Dorian thinks how he was sparring to avoid dealing with more time at court. Yes, Dorian, please continue to call Kale out on his hypocrisy. Kale asks Dorian if he has heard anything from his father and wonders where he went off to. Kale says he has no idea, but he remembers when he was a child, his father would leave like this, but it wasn't, but it hasn't happened in a couple of years. He says he bets he's off doing something particularly nasty. Kale wants, Do- Kale warns Dorian to be careful what he says, and Dorian asks, or what, you'll throw me in the dungeons? Dorian then asks if he thinks someone wants to kill the champions. Dorian says he can understand wanting to kill the champions, but to do it so viciously, he hopes it doesn't become a pattern. One, I want to laugh out loud at the the idea of Kale throwing Dorian in the dungeons. Two, Dorian isn't wrong that his dad, about his dad, because he's off doing something nasty. And three, for delusional Kale, three things is a pattern like three murders with the same mo like done the same way bodies found the same way that's literally how you track a serial killer bro seriously it is a pattern already but also dale dale (laughs) dale (laughs) dale Earnhardt. that's dorian and kill's ship name (laughs) Okay, I now want a shirt. This is I Heart Dale, but like <laughs> not Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> I'm wearing that in the South and then put it in Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> oh, but spell it like Kale, but with a D thing. Oh, Lord, that was too funny. Okay. We're not shipping Kale and Dory in here. <laughs> Anywho, Kale, what was I even going to say? <laughs> <laughs> I think you were supposed to be talking about Dorian. I well, I was going to talk about it in a second, but I had. Oh, is Kale the freaking thought police and the police of what people say? He's like, don't talk about Kane like that. Don't talk about Duke Parrington like that. Oh, Kale, don't talk about your Dorian. Don't talk about your own father like that. 
seriously, Dorian can say what he wants to say. He's a prince. He's the prince. You're the you're his employee. Yeah. Also, what do we think the king was doing during during Dorian's what do we think the king was doing during that's a lot of D's. D D D. <laughs> what do we <laughs> What do we think the king was doing during Dorian's childhood to be gone so often? Because now we hypothesize that this is around the time they're trying to make the wyvern, make the wyverns mm-hmm. for the witches and kind of draw that alliance. So what was he doing during his childhood? I think, I think been... he was visiting Morath where Duke Parrington was, but what was going on, you think? I think their main goal has probably been finding the other word keys. Because True. Like they needed all three. Mm-hmm. And then we know that they knew the poem to figure out where the rest of them were. Mm-hmm. So like. They were off hunting the other word keys. And he ends up finding. Keys. Another. He finds one. two of them. Yeah. Right? He has two. Yeah. The only one he hasn't found was the amulet one of warrant. It, it's worth <laughs> the amulet. <laughs> <laughs> the amulet of warrant. Yes. But like I think that's what they were I think that's what yeah, they were all doing. That makes sense. Most they of were, time. While he was younger, they were at least cuz they had the one word key because that's how they broke him out of his tomb was with mm-hmm. that one. So, after they got possessed and all, they were on the hunt for more word keys and so they at least found the one. Agreed. Yeah. Dorian asks if Kel thinks they will try to kill Selena. And Kale tells him he already added additional guards outside her door. Dorian asks if they are there pro- to protect her or to keep her locked in. Kale wonders what difference it makes, especially if Dorian is going to visit her anyway. The guards will let you in because you are the crown prince. Dorian thinks Kale sounds so defeated and bitter that he momentarily feels bad. He should stay away from Selena. Kale leaves to inspect Xavier's body again and Dorian heads back to his quarters. He has an entire lower he has an entire tower to himself, and while normally they are a haven from everyone, today they just felt empty. So Dorian's Rapunzel. <laughs> Locked up in his little tower. Little tower. <laughs> Waiting to let his hair down there, for a minute. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> True. But also Again, with Kale's jealousy of, well, you're going to get her because you're the crown prince. And then Dorian feels bad about that and yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Same day. New new day, same song. Yeah, Just goes in a cycle. And then in the next book, it reverses in the cycle. Yeah. Though when it's we a get big old little- love triangle right here in these. Though I will say, Dorian handles it a thousand times better Mm -hmm. than Kel. And we'll get to it later. But one of my favorite things that Dorian does is that... Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. One of my favorite things that Dorian does is, like, he notices that the two of them are starting to, like, get together. And Dorian looks at how they're looking at each other. And he's like, I'm not going to want somebody that doesn't want me. Mm Mm-hmm. And I want someone who looks at me the way that they're looking at each other. So mm-hmm. I'm going to let her go. And I'm not going to sit here and moon over someone who doesn't want me. And I'm like, know your worth, King. Yes. Know your worth. He does. <laughs> well, yeah. to say that. One of my favorite lines is when, and he was like, and when I open my eyes, I let her go. Like, I love that part. Yes. I love it's that sad, part. I'm like, it's I... sweet. And I'm like, yeah. Like. He knew as much as he did like her, he was an unselfish man. He, I think he did some things. He has his faults. But again, in that moment, he's like, you know what? I'm not going to be in the way of their love, even Mm -hmm. if it makes me sad. And so he was like, I can put them ahead of myself. And we love him for that. But also put myself in a good position where I want to be with someone who wants me first. Right, right. Like not settle for second best. Yeah. Yes. Which you're a prince. You don't settle, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you don't settle. Yep. Okay, that's chapter twenty six done. Straight on into chapter twenty seven. So chapter twenty seven starts with Selena staring up at the ebony clock tower. 
It grew darker and darker as if it somehow absorbed the sun's dying rays. Just throwing that out there for someone to catch. The gargoyles remained stationary. The guardians, Elena had called them. But guardians to what? If they were the evil that Elena had mentioned, then she would have said it so would have said so outright. Nehemia comes up and asks, What's your obsession with these ugly things? Selena asks if she thinks they move, and Nehemia replies, They are made of stone, Lillian, in the common tongue. Selena gushes over Nehemia's slightly less thick accent after only one lesson and wishes the same could be said about her Elway. Nehemia agrees that the gargoyles do look wicked, and Selena says the word marks don't help. One was at her feet, and she realized that there was 12 of them all together forming a large circle around the solitary tower. She hadn't the faintest idea of what it meant. None of the marks had here matched the three that she spotted around Xavier's murder site, but that there had to be some connection. Selena is right about the fact that they move, which we discover in Queen of Shadows. What makes them come to life? Was it because it was Sam Hewen and the whatever happens on that night allowed them to come to life? Was it a spell? Does someone have to do something with word marks to make them come alive? I can't remember. Is it? So... Is it Queen of Shadows where the towers don't come down to Queen of Shadows, right? Very end. Okay. So why in Queen of Shadows do they move? I can't really remember so, what makes them be more than stone. We don't ever get that. <laughs> it was just like she comes back from Queen of Shadows and suddenly like they're in the sewers. Like <laughs> like what the heck happened they are chasing like, people and like yeah like they're under they're under there talking to like people who are possessed by the vow like yeah. recording things like yeah she just stumbles upon them and then Warkin's there trying to kill her and she's like yeah. here get eaten by them yeah and, like <laughs> that whole thing happens yeah but yeah it's it never addresses it because in this book well we know they can move but we don't actually see them move because up until we find out from Kane that he was searching for her that night with the Ritter app I thought it was these things the whole time like it was these word hounds yeah. that were trying mm -hmm. to keep Elena and who else was ever was working with her is it Gavin I'm pretty we sure don't it's, know. Ga it's Gavin I think so too but whoever the word hounds were trying to keep them back. So she was like, I don't have time. And then she's rushing Selena out of the tomb. And I thought it was these guys. Cause she's like, oh, the gargles are the guardians and they're scary enough. And then it's like queen of shadows and these gargles are hunting them all. I'm just, what makes them come to life? Is it, does it a spell? Us? Is it? The, yeah. Question. Question about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep an eye out, but I don't know that she ever tells us. They just suddenly is like, oh, you can move now. Okay. <laughs> because Yay. the towers are still up at that mm -hmm. point. So it's not like, oh, the towers came down, so the magic is free and they can yeah. do all this. They can obviously do it before they were, they were fighting them while they were trying to destroy mm -hmm. magic. Mm -hmm. Or it's like we've talked about in a previous episode with the whole magical realm and Slain is not well, really open to that yet. Actually, it's all happening. I think, kinda... I think I just figured it out. Okay. <laughs> so when you're talk, when she starts talking to Mort, mm -hmm. he says that there was a spell put on okay. him, mm -hmm. and that because that spell was put there prior to, um, like he was imbued with magic, mm -hmm. and so when magic went away, it couldn't mm -hmm. eliminate like something that was written in word marks that was like mm -hmm. already alive mm -hmm. due to magic gotcha so they probably the king probably did something before he activated the towers of like making them able to move to guard from magic mm -hmm. and what was the king wanting to do with them stop thou from coming in like what were their purpose they're supposed they're supposed to be like 
a word gate used to be there and that's like mm-hmm. part of the reason why she was able to open that portal mm-hmm. there was like where it was there used to be a word gate at some point in time gotcha because they yeah. the word gates are both physical and non-physical mm-hmm. so that like, location i is feel like, like a it's spot. like a, a spiritual realm and you mm-hmm. can't see it unless you have like the sight is what i would call it yeah so there's things happening in the physical realm and the spiritual realm, and not everyone can see those spiritual realm things, but only on Sam Hewen or a night like that, unless Nehemia wakes it up in you and then you see all that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Food for thought there. Yeah. Which the word marks make a clock mm-hmm. around the clock tower because there's 12 of them. I'm just full of questions this episode. (laughs) Okay. Does, do all the, um, do all the Val just know word marks? Like, how does Kane know word marks? The Val in him knows them, so then he's able to use them. I I think because they, like, because they know who Elena is. Mm -hmm. Like, they know that Selena is Aelin. Because, mm-hmm. like, when her and Kane are fighting at the end of the book, like, he's, like, they talk to me and tell, like, he's, like, they talk to me and they told me about, like, and he's talking about her parents and everything like that. Like, he, the Val is telling him, mm-hmm. which I'm, like, why didn't the Val tell the Erwan? King and Erwan, yeah. Like, or it was the dead when he, she opened, when the, whoever he was talking to at the mm-hmm. end of the book yeah (laughs) my brain hurts my brain hurts too so then I was like also just had a thought about how Brandon has the nameless mark Mm -hmm. so did all Faye back in Brandon's time I think we talked about this last week too yeah well we did about the that sort of the the bastard mark and all Mm -hmm. but did all Faye of this time Brandon's time know word marks as well because then why are they so because then they're yes, not really it known used to be anymore. a more it used to be more common like fifteen thousand years ago so it was like a common religion language they all used them yes it was the fabric of the world and like mm-hmm. a language that was used mm-hmm. so i'm guessing like after the word stone thing mm-hmm. went down and the like gates got shut I think at that point, like, they all tried to kind of hide it so that nobody would be able to access it. Right. And then once the king, um, like, got rid of magic and everything, like, he destroyed all the books. Yeah. He could find that were associated with it as well. Yeah. Which is part of the Because I guess it works. He- it works for Erewhon that it's okay. You don't have magic users to help you with your conquest but it also benefits you because there's no one that can stop you yeah yeah okay I'm done with my questions <laughs> okay <laughs> but also again it's so annoying how cryptic Elena is in this one little time she could have given so much more than she gave all she she's could- like become the king's champion you're the only hope for Aurelia it's like, listen, I only got this amount of time. Give me the bullet points and let's go from there. <laughs> like, literally, it's not like there's a curse on it. Like, there's yeah. not like it's a curse, like in Akatar. Like, like, they literally can't speak about mm-hmm. what's going on with them. Why Tamlin has the mask on. Like, they're just like, oh, it's a plight. Because mm-hmm. they couldn't be like, yeah, this crazy chick cursed us. And if you don't <laughs> fall in love with this man in the next week, we're all we all dead. die. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not like that's the situation no. going on. She could have been like, hey, so funny story. You know how I killed, mm-hmm. you think I killed Erwan? I didn't. Actually. I trapped him. Mm-hmm. Now he's alive in Duke Parrington's body. He's mm-hmm. a Valg. And Maeve is a Valg, which nobody knows. So right. that you couldn't really tell anyway. Right. So ignore that part. But she could have been like, hey, bullet points. I didn't kill Erwan. Exactly. Erwan's a Valg. He's in Duke Parrington's body. You have to get rid of him. Here's... Find the three word keys. Here's the poem that my dad read because he <laughs> hit them. And uh, here you go. Because think about how much time she had to plan this. 
it's at 15, least thousand years. Okay, it's been that long, but then now it's been ten years since she helped save Selena when she almost died in the river. And it's like, okay, when I meet this girl again, I gotta lay it all out. The speech. <laughs> it's like uh, all of these just vagueness in this. I, if you can't tell, I like things to be straightforward and blunt about well, it. <laughs> And it's like, give it to me straight. But she's like, oh, you need to become the king's champion. And I can't talk. And I, I don't this have is... long. And it's like, okay, well, you're wasting the time that you do have. <laughs> this is why, like, there's the people who solved the riddle in Akatar, like, off the bat, knew it. The second I got given a riddle, you want to know what I did? I just, <laughs> I just shrugged and was like, mm, she'll tell me something. <laughs> like, Same. I didn't even read the riddle. Like the first time I read the book, I opened up and I got riddle and I just skipped the riddle because I was like, she's going to tell us eventually. Like, this is a plot point. She's going to tell me what this riddle means. Like, and sure uh, enough, at the end, I get it. And I was like, oh, cool. I would have never figured that out by my It's Tamlin's heart being of stone. True. Yeah. True about that. I hate riddles and I just need, I'm not going to sit there and guess on them. Just tell me the answer. Just tell it, Jamie. I don't want like to when we get the poem for where the word keys are. I just read it and I was like, not gonna figure it out. <laughs> you're gonna, it's a plot point, so you're gonna break it down for me. Like, I'm not a puzzle girl, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, Kelsey gave me a puzzle like three years ago for my birthday. It's 3D, it's yeah. 3D. I tried it for five minutes and my eyes crossed and I was like, I'm done. Like, <laughs> you just get to sit in the box, I'll never make this puzzle. It's got a cool. Um, oh, it's a beautiful puzzle. I would yeah. love to be able to make it, but my vision and those three D pieces, I'm like my eye, my eyes crossed, and I don't even have crossed eyes. <laughs> like the box is cool enough. You can just display that. Yeah, the box is on my shelf. Oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Selena asks Nehemia if she really cannot read the marks, and Nehemia replies that she no, she cannot liar and selena shouldn't try to figure out what they say either nothing good will come of it selena followed after her the snow would soon the snow would start falling soon yet you'll miss and the final duel were two months away she savors the warmth of her cloak remembering the winter she spent in endovia winter was unforgiving when you lived in the shadow of the rune mountains it was a miracle that she didn't get frostbite does anybody else want to scream <laughs> over Rune Mountains and Rune? Screaming That's internally. Nice. There is no coincidence of the Rune Mountains and having a character named Rune. What is the connection? I don't know what the connection is because you <laughs> literally have to spell things out for me because I will <laughs> not. I will not figure it out on my own. Honestly, didn't remember this. <laughs> Until... Until people were going over it in TikTok. Then I was like, oh, there's Rune Mountains and talk. Well, because- I read, I'd already read Crescent City before I read Rune and uh, I've heard people like, so maybe like Rune Mountains and Rune. I'm like, where are these Rune Mountains? Mm-hmm. And then I'm reading Tog and I was like, Rune Mountains. Okay, oh. I found them. Mm. But See, I'm like. Tog was like, it was Akatar Tog. Crescent City for me and now I'm rereading Tog I've read Tog probably twice I'm not sure all the way through but it's still a mystery to me what I'm going to find <laughs> it's like new all over again well but like yes. I've read I've read Akamath like seven or eight times oh, I've, now I've read Akamath so much yes and like the other day I was looking for something and I just flipped through and I was rereading things and I was like that's new and I'm like writing new notes in my book like oh that's different the Lyrians have rounded ears yes Autumn you knew that (laughs) my brain literally did not register that until my last read honestly with these it was like one sentence yeah and I was like too much yeah and I don't know why that one point blew my mind Mm because I was like I pictured them with like I thought I thought in every drawing I saw that they had pointed ears Mm -hmm. mm-hmm mm-hmm rounded but yeah I guess I just never pay attention to their ears and their drawings because Mm -mm. well you don't look at all of the little details 
we didn't know we were supposed to look at all every single little detail of every single little thing being a clue okay we were just trying to get the overall arching story <laughs> and then it turned into <laughs> crazy people who were highlighting and tabbing every little word it's like okay guilty okay we do have to pay attention what color their eyes are and what type of ears they have and what t-shirt they're wearing and what and, they smell like in their sense yes oh my, my thing <coughs> oh I was going to move on, but <laughs> so oh, go ahead. My thing in this is how Nehemia is so. What did I write? Down? A big fat liar. But why is Nehemia warning her so hard? Don't look into word marks. Stay away from it. Don't do this. Don't do that. Where it's like, girl, you need her help. You need her to know these things. Why not share with her your knowledge? Does she don't think she can trust her yet? What is the point of her being so? I don't, I don't know. Anti, don't look but, at this, don't look into this, don't, you know, but, I don't get it. Yeah, but thank God that Selena didn't listen because if she'd never looked into word marks, she'd well, have never honestly, made it back to Rowan. Honestly, she, it probably made her look into it harder because I feel like she's one of those people that's like, oh, you're going to tell me I can't do something? I'm going to go even harder. <laughs> <laughs> me. But seriously, yeah, I just don't get why Nehemia wasn't like, oh, yeah, let me point you in the Let's right have direction. I actually do know what those mean. It's got to be because she just doesn't fully trust her yet, and she doesn't want her own motives to be caught on yet. Yeah. I don't know, but I just feel like, oh, we, her and Elena are teaming up, and we need this girl to help us. Let's move it along a little bit faster. Yeah, like let us And with her, her being so secretive and anti about it, it makes her look even more like a suspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anywho. Yeah. So now that uh we've ranted about that, <laughs> Nehemia tells Selena that she looks troubled and Selena responds that she doesn't like the winter. Nehemia tells her that she should travel with her to Elway when she returns. Experiencing a blistering summer there will make her appreciate the winter more. Selena thinks about the summer she spent in the Red Desert with the silent assassins. She tells Nehemia that she would like to see Elway very much, and Nehemia tells her that tells her then she shall, her gaze lingering on Selena's brow. Again, with Nehemia staring at the brow. Mm -hmm. Is the nameless mark there? Can she see it? She's got to be seeing it, right? I feel like she... Or is she looking for it? Is she looking for I think it or does she see it? I think she's just continuously looking for it to see, like, is it Are you? glow? Yeah. Because honestly, you know, I just gave Nehemia a bunch of crap. Elena was probably just as vague with her. <laughs> and she's like, there's a girl coming to the castle. You need to go to the castle. Find her. And Nehemia's like, okay, what does she look like? What's her hair color? What's her eye color? Who am I looking for? And Elena's like, sorry, bro, can't help you. <laughs> well, she did tell her there was two people in the in Castle Ireland that, that could be she, the nameless. And she was like, one is more ready than the other. Yeah. Oh, again, okay. so they, which, are they male? Are they female? What's which we don't age? even find out till Empire of Storms. And I'm like, yes. what? Yes. So, okay, so I did give Nehemia a bunch of it, but she's like, I was given zero information as well. So I'm just going off of what I need, what the ghost told me I need to do. But yes, Nehemia is staring at her brow again. And mm -hmm. at this point, she knows she's never going to return to Ilway again, right? Yeah, she was told before she ever yeah. left Ilway that she would never return. Which is so sad because she... That had to suck. The way she's talking, it's like, yeah, like I would love to bring you to Ilway and... We'll see it again. She's mm -hmm. the way she's talking about it, just knowing that she's never going to see her homeland again is yeah. actually pretty sad. Which, as someone who has lived in the cold and in the hot, did living in the hot your whole life make you appreciate winters more? That it did not. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, nope, I don't think I'd want them anyway. I yeah. like my heart. <laughs> I appreciated seasons because I lived in Kansas City for three years. And I did appreciate springs and falls. Those were awesome. I Here's what I appreciated. The consistency of, oh, it's 
a spring day outside. It's going to be in this range. Not you go outside and it's 30 degrees in the morning and by lunchtime it's 85 degrees. Yeah. That's what I don't <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do miss of that's why the joke here in the south is that if you don't like the weather wait 30 minutes she'll change her mind because yes. she does yes every daggone day but this brings Selena back to saying well I have spent a pretty warm summer somewhere but she mm-hmm. obviously can't reveal that she no and carrying a bucket like five miles yeah they are back every day I'd I'd have passed out. Like, yeah. I'd have been done. She's a stronger woman than me. Yes. At that point, she's a, still a girl, but she's a stronger girl than I ever I was. Am a me woman. at 17 would have been like, nope, not happening. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yeah. Not me. <laughs> and then another thought I wonder if, like, following the events of, like, after Kingdom of Ash happens, if she ever goes to visit LA. Mm hmm. She just sails past it and tries to put the fires out, that mm-hmm. one little part of Ilwe. So, yeah, I wonder if she went and met Nahemia's family and... Yeah. Yeah. Sad I thought, would like to I would think like she to would. I feel like she would want to pay respects to her friend and their family. Yes. And the, the people that she was in and Dovier with. She felt such a strong connection to the Ilwe people. Mm-hmm. That I feel like for sure, she 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 would have went. I definitely think she did. I would like that story, Sarah. I'm just adding Add it, it to, to the my, list. My never ending list of things I would like Sarah J. Mass to write for me, right. please. Like she's my personal author. We we just been real real chatty. We are just chatty today. We're real sorry, not copies. really. We're almost okay. done. Then I call you again. Okay. All right, so now that we're done on our fifth rant of the day. (laughs) Nahemia and Selena begin discussing the murder, and Selena tells her that she saw word marks painted around the body and that he was missing vital organs. Selena is about to apologize for describing the murders in such detail when Kane and Varen walk up behind them. Kane tells her pretending to be a lady doesn't make her one, and wearing a crown doesn't make Nahemia a real princess, not anymore. Selena threatens to punch Kane, and he says lots of barking for the prince's lap dogs. But does she have fangs? Selena says, you'll find out when my fangs are, bur- are buried in your neck. You'll find out when my fangs are buried in your neck. Kane replies that she should let loose the rage she feels when she pretends that she is less skilled than she is, and that she should let him see what a year in Endovir really taught her. Kane asks if she thinks that her sponsor is the only one who will do anything to win. Does she think the prince and the captain are the only ones who really know who she really is? Does the prince and the captain... Does the prince and the captain... (laughs) Does the prince and the captain... Does she? (laughs) Oh Lord, I'm never gonna get this sentence out. Okay, does she really? Does she think the prince and the captain are the only ones who know who she really is? I made it. (laughs) It just hit me in this of Kane talking about how Selena is the prince's lap dog. Boy, that's exactly what you are for the Duke. You're his lap dog. You're his mm-hmm. little minion doing every little thing he's supposed to be doing. Yet you're going to call Selena the prince's lap dog. And I and know the real king can't control it. But this little thou little beast inside of him. Mm-hmm. But based on the way that Nehemia reacts to Selena telling her about the manner of the murder and the state of the body... I don't think she has all the puzzle pieces together quite yet because yeah. she, I think she's suspected, but her guards, she says her guards weren't able to get close enough to make observations. And with the organs missing and the word marks around him, it kind of starts to click into place for her. And Selena mistakes her disgust in the shock of her suspicion because I'm sure 
Nehemia didn't really want to believe that's exactly what was going on. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, she is disgusted. Like, someone's letting a vowed creature loose in the castle. Like, she knows exactly what that means. And Selena thinks it's her disgust for the goriness. And she's like, oh, I can't. Yeah. Sorry, I'm being so gross about it. But I yeah. think this is when the the pieces are clicking together of Nehemia of like, oh, this is what's happening. And then mm-hmm. Kane comes up and she's like, okay, I already suspected you, but you just proved me right. I also wanted to say, I love that like this subtle moment of like foreshadowing to Selena being Aelin and being Faye and having a Faye form mm-hmm. because she, t- he's like, does do you have fangs? And she's like, you'll find out when I bury them in your neck. Like, Mm-hmm. I think that was like Sarah's secret, like little hidden way of like putting that little nugget in there because she does actually have fangs, which we find out later. And then she really shouldn't have been shocked that Kane knows who she is, considering Duke Parrington was there. Yeah. When Dorian and Kale got her out of it in Dover. Like he saw her. They brought her in. He pushed he, her to the ground. They traveled for two weeks together. Yeah. Like, and you're shocked the man told his champion who you are? Mm-hmm. Seriously. Also, I forget that the Fae in talk have fangs. Mm-hmm. And each time it just comes back to me like, oh, yeah. I always wonder if Selena felt, because she kind of didn't really miss her powers for all Mm -hmm. of these 10 years that she couldn't but I wonder if she kind of missed that shifting because I feel like that's just a part of who she is like Rowan shifting into a hawk or Fenrir shifting into a wolf that's such a part of them that if they didn't have that would they feel so so when Rowan comes to Aurelia in um Queen of Shadows like the Like, she asked him, like, how are you feeling? And he was, like, panic overtook my body when, like, I felt my magic disappear and I, like, Mm -hmm. lost access to my second form. Mm -hmm. But in Crown of Midnight and Air of Fire, especially when he's, like, trying to get her to shift, Mm -hmm. you can, she mentions that she's never liked her Mm -hmm. fae form, like, because one, it was, the shift was painful Mm-hmm. And then because of everything that happened with her magic, like never being able to control it or understand it, like and everyone being she scared all, of it, mm-hmm. always being scared of it, that she never, I don't think she ever liked her fey form mm-hmm. until like she was with Rowan and was learning how to like appreciate what she can do in that form and like mm-hmm. healing from like her childhood trauma dealing with it. Mm-hmm. So I think during this time, like she's mostly just happy. She doesn't she's have access. Nor- she's normal. Yeah, she's normal and feels safe. Mm-hmm. And it isn't until she like heals during Air of Fire that like she learns to appreciate that second form. Mm-hmm. Good point. Makes me so sad for little baby Aelin. I know. Imagine her as a little baby Faye. Just... Yeah. We don't ever get to see point. any baby Faye. No. I'm so ready for Nyx. We've got the little, what was that episode? We don't know what baby Faye are called. <laughs> yeah. Talk about Lee. <laughs> Little baby Faye. Little baby Faye. Yeah. yeah. So now we switch to Kale's POV. And Dorian and Kale are in the shadows watching Selena train. Kale hoped Dorian would now see why she was such a threat to him, to everyone. Dorian asked Kale if he thinks she has a chance of beating Kane. And Kale says that if she keeps her cool head, She might, but she's wild and unpredictable and needs to learn to control her feelings, especially her anger. Kale didn't know it was because, Kale didn't know if it was because of Endovir or just being an assassin. Whatever the cause of that unyielding rage, she never entirely leashed herself. Her poor little fireheart. Mm -hmm. If I had been through what she'd been through, I would forever be angry as well. Like, she needed something to hold on to at least all of these 10 years so Mm -hmm. she doesn't break down and literally becomes a shell of a person. And I think her anger was that thing for so long. And it does come out in these moments of, yes, 
which in this she's imagining Kane's head she's punching and kicking and destroying over and over again but it's just on a a level so much higher than that of all the things that she's been through that yeah I would forever be angry too uh yeah and if Kale thinks this is anger uncontrolled anger um he he needs to he needs to go meet Nesta (laughs) can you imagine Nesta would tear him down (laughs) to shreds okay okay I want that now (laughs) <laughs> more, more than i want like an aelin feyre rice meetup can we have Ness and kel in a room together just for five minutes please just f- five minutes let the man say something <laughs> dumb and just nesta just eviscerate he will, him he will never be the same he, he would, would not have survive to, he would have to be for the rest of his life he would have to roll back over to irene and be like Save me again, she, please. <laughs> she's scary. Like, like I thought okay. Aelin was scary, but she's yeah, scary. Just wait. <laughs> so Knox enters the room and begins to train with Selena. Dorian is shocked to see that she is not is shocked to see that not only has she become friends with Knox, but she's willing to help train him. Dorian asks if Kel allows this, and Kel says that he will put a stop to it if Dorian wishes. Dorian says no. Selena could use an ally and then leaves. As Dorian walks away, Kel thinks that both he and Selena are bad at hiding their emotions. Kel knew jealousy when he saw it. He fears that bringing Dorian to watch Selena train did the opposite of what he intended. That gets me every single time. He knew jealousy when he saw it, yet he doesn't want to admit that in himself three or four times now. He's, yeah. Yeah, just leave it there. Yeah. I feel like even though SJM was dropping, like, constant hints of Selena and Kel being a thing, she also dropped hints that, like, them not being a good fit. Like, that someone else would end up taking his place. And I know when she was originally writing it, she didn't think that Rowan and Aelin would in, be in game but mm-hmm. she kept like wanting to put them together and so she kept writing fan fiction of her own characters being like what would happen if they fell in love and then was like oh, okay well they're telling me that they're in love so now I have to write them this way mm-hmm. and I'm like who else were you gonna put her with because you dropped way too many hints that this was not in game from the beginning yeah I wonder if she like, had to go make any edits of being like Mm, red flag here red flag here okay we'll give him a few little green flags oh red flags so we're like not completely pining for them to be together yeah she made a very uh she really flipped it around on us yeah she it was the it was the blueprint before we got Akamath. Mm-hmm. but like on the same kill front he didn't understand like her temperament and anger like he could never like connect with her on that way Mm -hmm. and also I think it was a hint that who Selena was in the fact that she befriended the one champion who was from Terrison like that was kind of like another clue of like she's from Terrison he's from Terrison keep Harrison is important to keep following mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. and also I didn't notice this until that literally this reread mm-hmm. making these notes that uh Dorian is wearing a red cape yeah in this scene also these little hints of Dorian's end game which we yes. still is unfinished let's just throw that out there it's unfinished that makes me mad she just Oh, and then he goes here and she goes there and, and she he literally she literally gets on a braxis and it was like, see ya, maybe, and leaves. Yeah. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> huh? No, 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 no. We've just read too much about you two and all of Empire of Storms and all of Kingdom of Ash, and you're just gonna ride off on a Braxis? Mm-hmm. No. And then fade he to black. Just... Mm-hmm. And then and then tell us that tell Maeve that she isn't the witch like that's his gonna be his queen like Mm -hmm. no you don't drop that line and then just 
go into just the great beyond. At least give us a Christmas novella after Koa. <laughs> For real, I just want my, I just want my cr- a quarter frost and starlight talk edition. Like, please, please, just give me three hundred pages of happiness because you gave me nine hundred and ninety eight pages of depression. Oh, Koa's, that's gonna be a tough one when we get there. It'll take a while. Yeah, I'm probably gonna cry myself to sleep every night and be like, I need a break. <laughs> A couple of days have passed and Selena is trying to research word marks in the library with Kale reading beside her. She wonders what are word marks, where did they come from, and why had she never heard of them before? An ancient religion from a forgotten time. There has to be a connection after seeing them in Elena's tomb, the clock tower, and the crime scene. So, so far, she hadn't learned much. One book said that they were an alphabet. Another book said there was no grammar with word marks and everything was just a string of symbols and they changed meaning depending on the marks around them. They were difficult to draw and required precise lengths and angles or they became something else entirely. Okay, one, I'm so glad I don't have to draw word marks because if I had to use word marks to save us, we'd be screwed. I'm <laughs> sorry. We we would summon the the demons from hell and I'd yeah. be like, I don't know how to fix it I'm sorry <laughs> which every time I read more about word marks I'm like please tell me they're Illyrian marks like I'm ready for the Illyrian tattoos to be I'm ready for Aelin to see the Illyrian tattoos and be like hey cool word marks and they'd be like what word marks and be like and the they read all and she reads the ones arms all over your story. body <laughs> yeah and then it tells us who an alias is yeah <laughs> there we go that's my head cannon now the war the tattoos tell us who an alias is because i want to know <laughs> <laughs> or she's or he's a woman yeah i like that theory too either one is fine. i do like that theory yes i think or, or they tell people. us what's hiding below ramiel yeah that too that's i think that's coming <laughs> this isn't this yeah we're getting so off track today <laughs> <laughs> but like if it means anything like Aelin's tattoo was to guide her back to Terrison, like, I just want to know. Also, mm-hmm. I think this was foreshadowing to what would happen at the end of Crown of Midnight with Archer accidentally changing the mark and mm-hmm. opening up the Hellworld portal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one little change. It reminds me of sign language, too. They're there's signs that are almost close, but you mm-hmm. do something just a little bit different and it means something completely different. So Kel questions why Selena is so frustrated and asks, what is she reading? She says she was looking into word marks and all she can find is just radical and outlandish theories. Some books claimed that the word is the force that holds together and governs Aurelia. Not just Aurelia, but countless other worlds too. Kel says that he thought the word was just an old term for fate or destiny. Mm -hmm. Selena says that she thought the same thing, but the word isn't a religion, at least not in the northern parts of the continent, and that it is not included in the worship of the goddess or the gods. Kel asks why she's looking into this, and she says she just finds it interesting. She says that some theories suggest the mother goddess is just a spirit from one of these other worlds and that she strayed through something called a word gate and found Aurelia in need of life and form. Insert screaming about the mother goddess. Is this so the much, mo- <laughs> so much in this like, it's just, oh, here's this little paragraph and it's like, Mm-hmm. wait all of this is going to matter all mm-hmm. of it the word word marks word gates the mother the goddess, mother the get the fate <laughs> and destiny and holding the worlds together and like if you were someone who has been spiraling after hostap and you're looking for connections it's in right my there. it's right here in chapter 27 it's mm-hmm. right there I wonder why multiple times they refer to as word marks are an ancient religion. But then mm-hmm. she says the word, the word isn't a religion, at least in the northern parts of the continent, yada, yada, yada. But why word marks? I think of them as a language like we use 
But then it's not necessarily so, a language either because they do things. So the way I kind of look at it is like the word marks are like the written version. Mm-hmm. The word is when she's speaking mm-hmm. it out because when she is drawing the word marks to activate them, she speaks mm-hmm. and then they glow and then the thing happens. And then the word gates are like what you make when you put the word marks and the word together properly. Yeah. That's but nice. word is the life force. <laughs> I need Hofas to get their world. I need Hofas and I need like Sarah wrote this is part of the reason why I don't think she's done. Yeah. She said she was done and I don't believe her because there's so you many questions us through eight books of this and we still don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> like we got eight books of this and like everything happened, bad guys gone, everything we're all good and I'm like nope, not good. Don't know what's going on. <laughs> like you did not you did not finish up you got us halfway there. You gave us information, yes. but we don't even know like which of this information is true, which mm-hmm. of it isn't true because these are like ancient books. Yeah. With people but, just theorizing. And then also back to the mother goddess. So we've got the mother goddess mm-hmm. who came through this word gate or mm-hmm. this rift, if you shall, or a <laughs> rip in the world, if you want to call it that based on which series you want to look at Mm -hmm. so we got the mother goddess and she's just a spirit from another world and she came to Aurelia and she's like oh they need form in life and let me just pour it out here and make this civilization then in Akatar, we've got the mother who poured out the cauldron Mm -hmm. and all life came from the cauldron and then what's our equivalent of that in cc do we know yet they I don't just think they refer up. to anything as a mother the human, goddess. Mm-mm. The humans, oh. Luna. Yeah, like of the goddesses we have, we have Luna, who is the moon goddess. We have Clithona, who is the earth goddess. And they goddess. talk about- and so, um, like all the gods and goddesses, but not a mother goddess of where life form came from because the humans were there first. And Spoiler for Hosab, which we've been spoiling that thing all daggum day. But <laughs> if you listen to this podcast, it's all spoilery. <laughs> so the humans originated from Midgard. They were there first. They had their library of Parthos 15,000 years ago. We don't have the full thing. We just have the few of their books left. So we don't know what their gods were prior to the Fae coming and then the Asteri being there. So, yeah, that's a good question Mm -hmm. of what they believed in because, you know, they weren't allowed to keep their gods and stuff like that. Which in Hosap, they, when they go to the temple of Erd Mm -hmm. or Yerd, whatever you want to say, however you want to say you already, Erd. It's Erd. She, um. But can we talk about how Erd sounds like word mm -hmm. and Erd is fate? (laughs) Yes, that's what I was trying to get to. Oh, Sorry. (laughs) it's It's okay you you can steal my thunder it's fine yes but yeah the um word sounds like word and mm -hmm. it basically means the same thing fate which destiny yeah which the under king is the one who points it out he's like mm, he says something and he's like maybe your kind recognizes when she used to be something else Mm -hmm. and they say by the word and then in Crescent City, they kind of say the same thing, like, Erd, help us. And you go to Ur to wish for things to happen. Mm-hmm. It's which there. Bryce the wishes for tingling. Bryce wishes for adventure and, oh, honey, you got it. You got, you got your adventure. She should have wished got- for some rest <laughs> and relaxation. She also wished for boobs on the gate, and she got those too. So, mm-hmm. like... Mm-hmm. Bryce better be careful what she wishes for because her <laughs> wishes keep getting answered. She's got one more. She's got one more wish. <laughs> she better wish to go back. <laughs> so Kel warns her that Kel warns her that sounds a little sacrilegious. And Selena wonders what it was like for him living in the castle and growing up in the shadows of a king who ordered so much destruction 10 years ago. Selena continues, there's an idea that before the goddess arrived, there was a, there was life. 
an ancient civilization, but somehow they disappeared, perhaps through that word gate thing. Ruins exist. Ruins too old to be for fay making. Too old to be of fay making. Kel tells Selena that she sounds like a raging lunatic a raging lunatic and she replies sorry for having some interest in the history of our world Kel asks why she is so frustrated and selena tells him that she wants a straightforward answer about what word marks are and why they are in the garden here specifically magic had been wiped out on the king's order so why had word marks been allowed to remain and why did they show up at the murder scene I went Selena. I want a straightforward answer, please. And she's never given one this whole daggum this time whole series. She has to find out herself what the nameless ends up meaning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. We're mm-hmm. <laughs> so I need to know the ancient ruins being older than the Fae literally keeps me up at night. Like when I can't sleep, my brain's like, who are these fae? Where did they come from? Mm-hmm. The fact that, that there's an Asterian fae in the Southern continent. Asterian mm-hmm. fae. Asterian, steery, Asterian, steery. I can't sleep. It's great. It's really not great. Is, but it it's the fine. Same, is this the same ancient ruins that are in the Southern continent when she goes to the desert? Okay, so this is all tied. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And so but, but were were those Fey though, or were those ancient be- predate the Fey? I think so. Those Fey are considered ancient Fey, but then there's other ruins, ruins who predate that. that. Yes. Mm, okay, gotcha. So, like, who were these beings? Mm-hmm. Where did they go? Were Is they the way Carver and his siblings? <laughs> <laughs> Could be Is the death. We God. know he's the sin. We know he's the sin eater. I'm with Lily and I'll I die on that hill. As well. And I think he's the one who made, I'm with Lily. He made Truth Teller mm-hmm. and he made the Star Sword. And I guarantee you, he made Damaris. And then we have those ancient ruins in the ocean in mm-hmm. Hosab. Who are these ancient people? Mm-hmm. Fill me in here. I need to know. Um, and I really wish that instead of Kale being the one in the library, this was Dorian. Yeah, because just imagine if it was Selena and Dorian having this conversation, this man would have jumped on the bookworm train and he would have been in the books with her being like, like, you can't, yeah. if you're watching this, you can see what I just did. But if not, I like <laughs> put my book directly in my face and was like studying hard. He like, he likes history. We know yeah. he likes history because and he a reckon- solve a good puzzle. Yes. Like. This is when we need the Dorian and Selena book club. We don't need Kale mm-hmm. here in this moment. He's not helpful. He's like, oh, you sound crazy. Dorian would have been like, oh, Bessie, here's a book that sh- says this. Yeah. And she'd be like, oh, and this book says this. And those two, Kale would have had to come and drag them out of the library because they'd be like, we can't leave. Yeah. No kidding. Kale is so boring. Dorian would have been on that train so fast. He would have found the answer he would have took it up he would he would have took over and started driving because he would probably know where books are Mm -hmm. in the library he would know where she needed he would have been so much help and kale's literally zero yeah zero help so you know zero fun and zero help (laughs) selena goes over the information she gathered again There is the idea of word gates, which appeared numerous times, which appeared numerous times alongside the mention of word marks. The gates were both real and invisible things. Humans could not see them, but they could be summoned and accessed using the word marks. They opened into other realms, some of them good and some of them bad. Things could come through from the other side and slither into Aurelia. It was the reason so many strange and fell creatures of Aurelia existed. This section, this, this chapter is so genius now that we have Crescent City. 
-hmm. the word gate is like northern rift alarms going off it also Mm -hmm. reminds me of like amran and the death gods like amran being like the rip in the sky the rip in the sky and then i was just on a new world okay i want to know what the death gods came through was it the same rip as amran or was it a new and different rip than amran than amran like Mm -hmm. and then we're all so shocked at the end of hosab (laughs) because it's like everyone's going to all these different worlds in all three series and it's like nope they can never go to the same one yeah i'm like not happening i think it's because literally no other author has like written multiple series at this around the same time and said you know what i'm just gonna connect all my series because yes there's fey Mm -hmm. in all of them and they're fighting a bad guy and there's the good guys that's the only symbol. Well, now that we know more, but at first, that was the only thing that tied these together. Yeah. If you're looking at the grand scheme of things. Yes. Now that we know they're related, we can find all of these little hints and Easter eggs and this, that, and the other. But it's like, oh, yeah, um, they're yeah. completely separate universes, completely separate worlds. It's like if our Lord of the Rings had a crossover with. I don't know any Lords of the Rings. I'm sorry. I don't either. The, what's the dragon? <laughs> Game of Thrones. It's like if Lord of the Rings had a crossover with Game of Thrones, it's like, yeah, they're both fantasy, but it's like, what? Like, it would break the internet, and we're all broken. Our minds are broken, and yeah, we need like Hofas immediately. We need it, like, seven months ago, to be honest. Like, I've been spiraling for a year now. Thank you, Sarah. This? which she was a freaking genius which she said she wanted to like just put crumbs there like with the idea that her worlds could be connected but she mm-hmm. when she started she didn't know she was going to connect them and she was a genius for this she was a genius for saying you know what i'm gonna do it also a a great way to make so much money yeah a great way to make so much money smart woman why are we talking so much <laughs> Like our, because this, this is, is the longer this is, than, <laughs> this is longer than like our ho uh ho web episode it's this it's we should have just did this chapter by itself but it, i was it's like fine. it's fine it's fine it goes together mm-hmm. honestly like it would have been dumb to do them separate but yeah selena pulled another book towards her it was as if someone read her mind it was a large black volume entitled the walking dead in tarnished silver letters. She didn't remember selecting it from the shelves. It reeked almost like soil. She scanned it for any sign of the word marks or word gates, but found something more interesting. An illustration of a twisted, half-decayed face with flesh falling from its bones. The hollow, mad eyes of the monster were full of malice. If the king knew this kind of book existed, in his library, he would have had it destroyed. And unlike the great library of Orinth, there was no master scholars to protect the invaluable books. So we know that the Walking Dead shows up when someone needs it. Mm -hmm. So my biggest question is, how did it end up in Crescent City? Who over there needs the Walking Dead? And they didn't, because Bryce kind of just scrolls past it she's like oh there's the walking dead the book of breathing yada yada and it's like she didn't even look at it so yeah mm-hmm. like i i think it's gonna come up in ho fast mm-hmm. ho fast theory here like, do we think sorry sorry go ahead go. with your theory no go ahead do we think it was in lunathian in jessica's <laughs> jessica's vault until ayla needed it and then it shows up here again <laughs> Um, I think it tell I don't know. I think it just like pops up where it wants to be. It's like, yeah. oh, these people need me, let me go over there. And oh, yeah. these people need me, let me go over there. Yeah. Like because after like after Crown of Midnight, mm-hmm. we literally never see it again. Like Mm-mm. it just disappears. Yeah. But like, who's gonna use it? Mm-hmm. And how are they gonna use it? Mm-hmm. Are also, they learning I- word marks as well? Also, I want to know, like, is there some connection between the Library of Parthos, the Great Library of Orinth, 
and then Helion's libraries because I feel like there is like in the library under the house of Wynn. true I just I went with Helion's because his are supposed to be even better than mm-hmm. the house of wind one mm-hmm. but yes I I'm stopping that rant before it starts <laughs> there's libraries and they're all important are they all connected especially there, on the sixth floor mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. are there word gates in all of them are they the library in the southern continent where miss irene is yeah mm-hmm. there's too many libraries there's no yeah yeah okay yep but just, also want to acknowledge that it smells like mold like yeah. it smells like the the valg so the walking dead reeked almost like soil like you said the valg stink mm-hmm. but also obsidian salt reeks of mold and rotten earth Mm-hmm. it all smells the same it summons bad creatures are the valg the creatures of hell are the valg hell is it the same they are the the first four <laughs> levels are the ones that worry about the life okay we gotta stop <laughs> we've been talking for too long we We cannot we can't do this again so to (laughs) just leave it there it all reeks of mold and rotten earth and soil yes and we will we've been here for a very long time (laughs) going seven million different directions so we're just gonna there's too many connections too many things to put together yep this chapter just has so much so much selena's head swung to the back of the library hearing a groan a guttural noise an animalistic noise she begins to think it might be one of the great evil things that elena mentioned or one of the things she saw in the walking dead instead she finds out that it was kel dragging the knife on the floor to mess with her damned idiot she mutters as she stalked from the library grabbing two of the heavy books making sure to leave the walking dead behind and that's finally chapter 27 done (laughs) yes we made it and we're sorry not sorry for talking so long to recap this episode kale bursts into selena's rooms demanding to know where she was the night before and she says she was in her rooms as he can attest to We find out that another champion, Xavier, the thief from Melisande, was found murdered, so the tests and lessons are canceled for today, and we are down to 16 champions. She goes exploring the tomb again and looks for clues and wonders why Elena tasked her with stopping the evil thing, and she later heads towards the library and comes face to face with the dead body of Xavier, and it is much more gruesome than she expected. Selena examines the clock tower and the gargles in the garden with Nehemia. Nehemia is working very hard to act like she knows nothing about the word marks and warns Selena that it is dangerous and she should quit looking into them. Kane taunts Selena and lets it be known that he knows who she really is, as in Selena, not Lillian, the jewel thief. And later Kel and Selena are and later Kel and Dorian are watching Selena train and Knox comes along and we have some major jealousy vibes from our prince. And we also have some jealousy vibes in this episode from our boy Kale as well. And Is he really our boy? He's not our boy. Mm, we have some yeah. major jealousy vibes from our captain of the yes. guard. Mm-hmm. Then Selena's researching word marks in the library with Kale, who is reading, and she learns a little more about the word, word marks, and word gates. And most importantly, we get our look at The Walking Dead. So big chapters. We finally made it halfway through throwing a glass so silent little golf clap for us we are halfway through so we started in september it's almost the end of april we're making progress we're making progress so we've made a couple pit stops along the way yeah just our bonus episodes we got to break this up somehow yes but yeah thank you for following along with us we are halfway through throwing a glass And just a warning that when we get to Crown of Midnight, we're probably going to skip over this kill in a slate of hearts. (laughs) If it doesn't matter to the whole series. Yeah. 
But please don't forget to like and subscribe to us. And you can find us over on Instagram at Throne of Chaos Pod. Come say hi to us. Tell us if we messed up anything in this episode because we got off track a few times. And many times. <laughs> you can also find us on YouTube. So check us out over there and subscribe if you'd rather watch us than just listen to us. It might be more fun. I don't know. But thank you so much for listening and we will see you next week. Bye.